this video, we will talk about various types of fishing, how they impact our oceans, and what you can do to help. In longline fishing, lines are dropped from boats and hooks are submerged up to 3,500 feet underneath the surface of the water. Swordfish and tuna are the target species in most longline fishing, but oftentimes fishermen catch untargeted species, known as bycatch, such as sea turtles, seabirds, dolphins, and sharks. These sea animals are then thrown overboard and rarely survive the encounter. In drift net fishing, expansive nets that serve to snag fish by their gills are allowed to drift freely in the ocean at depths of up to 50 feet and lengths of up to 40 miles. These nets are extremely effective in catching targeted species, but also result in tremendous volumes of bycatch. In bottom trawler fishing, huge funnel-shaped nets are weighted down by metal plates and are dragged across the ocean floor. Besides an extremely large volume of bycatch, bottom trawling also destroys ocean habitats that are critical in the development of juvenile fish. In purse seine fishing, a spotter plane locates large schools of targeted species and relays the coordinates to fishing fleets. A fishing vessel then encloses the perimeter of the school with a large net. The net is cinched tight and pulled aboard, capturing large quantities of not only targeted species, but also high volumes of bycatch as well. There are two types of aquaculture. The first type involves raising fish in above ground tanks, where they are fed high protein feed pellets made of wild fish. Fish are often fed antibiotics in order to reduce mortality rates and boost productivity. This can put pressure on the natural stocks of wild fish, thus defeating the purpose of farming fish. The second type is conducted in coastal waters where nets or cages are submerged and stocked with fish. Although this technique lessens land disturbance, it can spread disease from the nets or cages into the open ocean. Also, if a native species breeds with a farm species, it can endanger the wild fish populations. Fish farms can also threaten the natural habitat of the coastline, as well as destroy its aesthetic beauty. Chemicals and waste runoff from both coastal and above ground farming can be detrimental to coastal ecosystems. Aquaculture does alleviate some of the pressure on fish, fish stocks, however it is not necessarily the best solution to the problem. Before you eat some of your favorites, such as tuna or salmon, you should know how many fish you are actually consuming. Tuna, for example, is at the top of the food chain. Therefore, you are actually eating every fish below tuna. Additionally, there are health risks when consuming predatory fish. Harmful chemicals such as mercury are stored in the fat tissue of the fish and passed up throughout the food chain, therefore accumulating in the large predatory fish that end up on your dinner plate. There are many ways to help reduce environmental impacts of overfishing. One way you can do your part is by simply knowing what you are eating and where it is coming from. Sources such as National Geographic, the Environmental Defense Fund, and the Monterey Bay Aquarium all offer information about the eco-friendliness of different seafood and the health risks they pose.